appeal and review, uh, they've got 10 days to file an appeal. Uh, they can also file, the tenant can also file a uh, certiorari. Uh, bonds on appeal. Again, this is where I to told you that you needed to make sure that the judge puts on your judgment that the, uh, it was for breach of non-payment of rent. If the tenant appeals, and that's not the grounds for, um, that's not noted on the, on the writ, then the plaintiff, the landlord, has to post a bond in order to be able to go get possession. And it has to be in double the amount of, of, of rent for one year. That's a pretty steep bond. But at, come down here at the bottom, the grounds are that the tenant breached the contract by failing to pay rent, and that's noted on the, on the warrant, then the tenant has to post a bond equal to one year of the amount of rent at the time that they appeal. They don't, you can immediately issue the writ uh, through the General Sessions Court. You don't have to wait. So you want to make sure that that's there. Um, the bonds that are up there for, uh, for damages, particularly uh, for the tenant, uh, for the plaintiff plan, or, or in case they're, they're damaged, because you moved them out. Um, bankruptcy, big issue. Tenant can file either Chapter 7 or Chapter 13 on you. What happens on, on that? Well, under that case and under that scenario, Chapter 7 is a voluntary bankruptcy. They're discharging their debts. The problem is there is an automatic stay, both in a Chapter 13 and a Chapter 7, that applies. You can't take any action against the debtor or the debtor's estate, his property, without relief from the bankruptcy court on that, uh, of that stay. And a leasehold interest in pro in the, in, uh, that you've given him is an interest in property and it's protected. There's also the, the trustee has an interest potentially in a, in a lease, but they're not, they're not there, but you have to get relief from them. In a chapter seven, you can do one of two things. You can wait, which the tenant then is going to live in your property until such time as you get uh, not do anything, and it's going to take about 60, between 60 and 90 days for two things to occur. Those two things are the trustee can file a report of no assets, has to file that, plus the uh, discharge is granted to the debtor. Typically, once that trustee's filed that no asset and that discharge is granted, then you're, you don't have to apply for relief. But that's 60 to 90 days out from the date of filing. He's li they are living in your property without paying rent, not unless you've entered into a new agreement with them. Uh, you can file a motion for relief and for relief in the automatic state and for abandonment. And to do so, you've got to you pay, cost you $176 in cost. You're going to need a lawyer to help you with this. I'm sorry. It's not set up. It's possible. It's convoluted for you to do it. You have to go to the clerk's office. You have to keep up with it. Um, but, I mean, that's your choice. But it would be smart if you got a lawyer to file that, to get to that in, uh, on a Chapter 7. The same thing's going to happen in a Chapter 13, except Chapter 13's a wage earner. What happens there is the tenant's wanting to pay you possibly for the back rent over time, um, but they're not going to offer to pay you ongoing until you file a motion to accept or reject the lease. And upon the filing of that, then they typically, they're, they're, they will enter into an order that grants, okay, we will begin commencing payment uh, of rent the next uh, first day of the month. The, um typically a, that motion to be heard it comes up at 9 o'clock after the filing. That's not a trial date. Trials in bankruptcy are normally heard at 10 o'clock, and it's on the second setting. But typically, you can get this resolved with a lawyer very quickly. We file the motion. We send the lawyer the, for the debtor a copy of the motion as well as a proposed order. We negotiate that fairly quickly, and we get that order entered, and we get the tenant starting to pay. Then you also file a claim for your arrearage. You're listed as a priority unsecured creditor, which means you're going to get paid if the plan goes forward over time. If, you, if they get dismissed, you're not going to get paid. 
but you also have in this order that the key provision here, if the debtor fails, you, fails to pay you ongoing rent, the relief from the automatic stay is automatically granted by this order. You don't have to go back to, uh, to the bankruptcy court. You go directly to General Sessions and file your FED. One, one second. Before we get to questions, I want to make sure we get, uh, get these in, in the microphone. Um, can you push a button right there on the bottom? There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. We have another question? I want to make sure I pass the mic around so that we, uh, everybody can hear the questions. Bucky, you lease to Mr. and Mrs. Jones, you file an FED, and uh, Mr. Jones, uh, you get a call from his attorney, Mr. Jones files bankruptcy. Mrs. Jones cannot file because she filed Chapter 7 three years ago. Can you proceed? No. If he's on your lease, right. he's on your lease, no, you can't. You have to go get a, uh, you have to get uh, that, that order entered either to accept or reject the lease. Now, if he re rejects the lease, your question is whether she's paying you your rent. No, neither one of them are paying. Well, they file bankruptcy. If he doesn't want to accept the, the lease ongoing under your cir circumstance, then, you can then you're going to get an order granting you relief on the rejection of the lease. Uh, not accepting the lease, and you, you're free from him, and without her being in bankruptcy, you're free to evict him at that point in time. Does that answer your question? I'm sorry. I'm confused. <laughs> he, he filed a Chapter 13. She can't because she did it three years ago. I understand that. Yeah. But and if he's on the lease. to stay in the house. Uh, I'm sorry? They're doing this, obviously, to stay in the house. Uh, I cannot proceed with eviction. No, not at that point until you get relief from the automatic stay. Okay, second quick question. 12-month uh, lease goes into month to month after that. Three years later, I send them a 30-day notice uh, that, I, that as per your lease, uh, this is your 30-day notice. It's not being renewed. If they file bankruptcy, I haven't said a word about money. If they file bankruptcy, are they, can they be protected against my notice to vacate? I haven't said a word Te about technically money. Technically, it falls back <laughs> to the same scenarios here. There's case law that you've terminate, given notice of termination. Right. Once that letter is issued, that's effective as far as the bankruptcy court is concerned. But you're going to have to go into court, prove that, and get your relief from the automatic stay that, that you still have to file for that in the bankruptcy Even court. though mine's not a monetary issue. Even though it's not a monetary thing. Okay. Thank you. All right. And I think that concludes where we are. I've already covered the criminal activity, I think, and discovered that with you. There isn't anything new at this point in time. I had it in there. Uh, there are some issues that are coming up and being studied, but they have nothing to do with landlord-tenant or evictions. Or at least, let me back that up, with evictions. There are some issues coming up on mold, but nothing else. Are there any other questions? Yes. Yeah. I just wanted to, wanted to make note, you, uh, you talked about the appeals. Yes. And typically, I've had tenants appeal, and they go on the pauper's oath. First time they did it, I went to the appeals court a year later and showed up. Tenant didn't show up. The next time it happened, I said, well, I'm not wasting my time. Then I get a notice that the judge found me uh, responsible for paying the court costs. So it caught, I took a, about a $275 seminar to had to pay the uh, appeal court costs because I didn't show up. Because I, you didn't show I up? I didn't show up. The tenant didn't show up. I didn't show up. Well, that's, that's, that's really, I don't know who the judge was, but typically if the tenant who appealed <clears throat> didn't show up, the case should be dismissed well, according, and, and, re, and remanded back to the juvenile. Uh, according back to, according uh, to Jimmy Moore, who's in charge of that, uh -huh. Jimmy said, Arnold, and I know Jimmy personally, he said, Arnold, you got to pay because you didn't show up and the judge found that you were responsible for it. Well, that, that's, that's the decision of the judge, but, right, yeah. But I'm, I'm just passing this on, so don't take this lightly if somebody files an appeal on you. Just remember, you can show up or you and your lawyer can show up. 
Uh, particularly, yeah, particularly in circuit court, yes. I yeah, I mean, I, I, that's a deal, you know. And I found in bankruptcy, let me tell you what, the, the person, if they got some people living there that are not on the lease and things like that, they filed, you're, you're just, it's like an iron door comes down between you and them. It's, it, that's the way I've seen it. Uh, if, they're, if they're in the premises, uh, mm -hmm. if they don't, uh, they're occupying the premises, the question is whether they have a right to be there. It may be they've entered on, they may have entered forcibly and unlawfully, in which case it, you're, you're dealing with a forcible entry and detainer. They have no right to be there. Um, uh, I would certainly argue that in the bankruptcy court that uh, they have no right to continue occupancy of it because there's no formal lease agreement with the landlord. It, it's been my experience in bankruptcy court that they use this to keep from paying rent and the uh, judges here are very liberal and they're not going to give you a lifting of stay fast. It's going to be well, about three Well, they months. won't give it to you on the front end, Arnold. Right. But it, with the orders that we prepare in our office and the way we handle this is that we get, we file those motions for, uh, to accept or reject a lease and we send a consent order to the other side and we spell out what the back rent is and when the, the rent is to resume beginning and put that date in there and we say either sign this consent order or we, here's the other consent order that says we're rejecting the lease and we're still granting uh, relief from the automatic stay and we give them 20 days to get out. And that, 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 that's it. I, I need to talk with you then. Yeah. <laughs> My lawyer's good. Be, because because here, that's bankrupt. the issue when you go in before the bankruptcy judge, it, it's not a complicated case when the bankruptcy judge, they're going to they're gonna look at the tenant and say, what are you doing? What are you going to do? You're going to stay and pay or are you going to get out? Because you can't stay and not pay going forward. They won't let you do that. But you have to file a motion. If you don't, you, yeah, you're going to be stuck.